Right, uh, it's Chris out here again. I'm down in the shed playing with my 62 again. And I'm gonna have a bit of a rant today about my new toy I just bought. Don't you love unpacking Chrissy presents? Right, eh? It's not even Christmas. These arrived today. Ugh, jeez. Aluminium, but really heavy. Uh, they did look very beautiful in their billet alloy uh, CNC machine state, but I always worry about the way aluminium looks after a while, so I've actually sent them off to the anodizers to make them look pretty. So they went back for a few days, but anyway. Um, the reason I'm going to call it a bit of a rant is because I've had a couple of rear lower control arm problems in the past, and what got me was that every time I uh, go online and look at rear lower control arms, expecting to see people putting new ones in for the same reasons I am, all I see is GVM upgrade, GVM upgrade, and people talking about, you know, cheap GVM upgrades and, you know, and the on-track version, which is a few dollars, but to me, this is why you'd go that way. I've seen GVM upgrade for, you know, say it costs you four or five grand to do the on-track version with springs um, fitting uh, the new rear, rear lower control arms, um, mod plated, whatever. I think it costs a few bucks and you get it up to 4,080 kilos from memory. I'm not going to go into all that. Lots of people have gone into all that. That's not my rant. My rant um, is why you would go a GVM upgrade without them because if you're going for a GVM upgrade, I think I've seen you can go a couple hundred kilos for 500 bucks for the mod plate because of the axle weights and all the rest of it. That's fine. Keeps you legal, I suppose. But these people are touring and if you're touring, you'll think you're on GVM anyway, which... I try and keep things light, so I try and keep as, as light as I can without you know going overboard. I mean, I've got a lightweight ply storage system, for example, because I just try and avoid too much weight. Um, having said that, I better put mine over the scales again. Uh, in my bull bar, I leave it. I just leave a gutted ARB Summit bar on with none of the extras, no hoops, no nothing, just to try and keep it down to that 80 kilos on the front. Anyway, if you think you're going over GVM and you're getting a GVM upgrade for that reason. This is what you... <laughs> the reason those lower control arms get replaced by Andrew for his upgrade is because they're weak. So if you think you're going to be carrying extra weight and have a lot of extra weight out of the back axle, to go a GVM upgrade just for the sake of your insurance being all okay with your extra weight on your car, that's fine. But here's the reason I would do it. This is this is not my first rodeo. This car's got 35,000 Ks on it, and I've done two of these. Both right-hand ones, actually. That's the right-hand one, even though it's on the left. You can see, ob it's obvious what's wrong with it. It's just it's just kink through the middle. Um, now, I'll show you in a sec uh, where I did the first one. Whee, there's an example. Um, and with the all-wheel drive and whatever it does, the levelling hydraulic suspension which this model has um this is pulling to the right i might have a tie down a bit i think um what other complaints karen was the first one that was up cape york from halfway between maytown and palmerston station or something or other um and i was just going through a dip and it didn't bother me much on that when i was had that video camera running because i didn't think it was that bad and the car smoothed all that but I'd actually gone through the dip and coming up out of the dip, it was car was already loaded up and I was I was hoofing a bit, it was already loaded up and then it's hit like a speed hump sort of ledge across the road on the way out of the dip and really weighted the back down. And I straight away noticed the back of the car wandering and it actually I thought it just knocked the wheel alignment out. But when we tried to wind the wheel alignment back in, it had actually bent the rear arm. Now I haven't got that one here, but it had the slightest bend and where the bend was all it was was that that part there was just slightly kinked up it was just slightly kinked up and you could hardly notice it but it was enough that it it made the rest of the trip rather interesting and i actually wore out a tire with that alignment i was coming back from the cave i actually wore out a tire on the way home didn't worry too much on the bitumen but on the gravel it was quite amusing because it was just swaying crab walking sort of thing um now I am not, I wasn't overloaded. We put the car on the scales before we went and I think from memory I was 3,400. So I'd have to look that up. Don't tell that as gospel. But either way, I was well under GVM 
and I had airbags in, and this is another thing that might have been a contributing factor. I had the airbag, and the airbags sit in there. I only had them down to about eight pounds, thinking that I wasn't using them. I wasn't had them in the back of the car loaded that much. So I had them down to eight pounds, but what happens then is they're still sitting there in the spring, and as the car goes down, it sort of then hits that, and it's a bit of a shock load, whereas the spring's a nice linear load on the arm. That was a bit of a shock load when it got to the airbag, compressed the airbag, if you like. So that might have been a contributing factor. I should have had the right down on those roads, maybe. Another contributing factor, I wonder, and I might be wrong, but if that arm sits like that, actually, yeah, that'd be, that'd be right inside of the car. And that's how it normally sits, say, on an angle like that. As soon as you lift the car, it's then like that. Now, when it's like that, the load of this, with, this, with it down more, sorry, down more, the load ends up on this edge here, because the spring's like that, but this side of the spring's going out with more load. I'm not even sure if that's a factor, just a thought. So I'd be interested to see if any standard height cars have had this problem, or is it just cars with lift, or just curious how many people have when I don't read about it. Uh, anywhere when I was Googling, it just doesn't come up. Just the GVM upgrades come up. So to me, having the billet alloy arms is purely getting rid of a weak spot. If I'd done it twice, like, and both times I couldn't, I couldn't put it down to anything, anything ridiculous that I did. I do drive this car off road a lot. We've had it up at Kenilworth and uh, Imbal Forest, and we've done all lots of big hills and lumpy hills and slid sideways into a few things. I do get a bit of a hard time. I've knocked the alignment out a few times, but I don't think I'm that hard on the car. I know a few of my mates will say otherwise. I don't think I'm that hard on the car. There's a lot of blokes out there uh, that are harder on the car, eh, George? Anyway, um, the thing is, that is the main reason for me for replacing these arms. So if you got one of these and you take it off-road uh, a bit or you load it up, I'd be replacing them as one of the first things I do because I've done one on the Cape and the one the other day, as you'll see in a minute, it was a bit of an annoying spot at an annoying time of day. Lucky I wasn't that far from home. We'll have a look at that. Wait, Chris, are you've just, I think you've broken something, eh? <laughs> that did not look good. No, it didn't, eh? That rear wheel was like jammed in there. I reckon the yeah, alignment's gone out. Uh, I've broken the whole rear arm. Time for billet ones. Do I get a watch it for me so I don't fuck ah! That looked pretty minor. Like, I've just gone down around that corner, down a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a lumpy little hill. And the wheels just sat perfectly in a rut and up against the bottom of that tree stump. It's really hard to tell for that video because it's, it was only the kids behind me taking a video. Um... But it's just tucked in behind that root and it's just grabbed there. And as I drove round to the right, it's just hooked up on the tree. I was watching in the rear vision mirror and I could see the tree and I was just hugging the tree and I thought, oh yeah, the wheel's at it now so I can start to turn. And it's just picked up on the side of that. So we're guessing from that that it was already bent or kinked or something had already happened. Having said that, a few minutes, a few minutes before that, I was doing this.
from that, I know I didn't have an alignment problem. The alignment was fine. So it wasn't bent beforehand. So I don't know how it could be weakened or what. Um, I have knocked the alignment out a couple of times. For whatever reason, I've always thought I've knocked the left-hand alignment out. But it's always the right alignment, which is right at the end of its adjustment. Anyway, that is another good reason, that adjustment issue, to go for the billet lower control arms when you've got lift because when you've got uh, as we say this is now down at you know uh we say that angle down at that angle i got it wrong before down at that angle yeah that's right and when it's down at that angle um just purely because that distance as you're down can't be pushed out as, enough on your adjustment on your adjustment on your bolts for your wheel liner so what happens if you lose a bit of now to get the camber back right what andrew's done with the new arms is he's made i presume he's put the where the holes machined in the arm it's just further out so it's already slightly longer so you're back in the middle of your adjustment again so you can get a good adjustment that's another good reason to go for these arms it just puts the alignment back where it's meant to be after we've lifted once again in in standard form won't be that won't be a problem because they're just fine because they're lifted you just lose that bit of adjustment. So that's another good reason to go for the arms. Anyway, you can see where my rant's heading. I'm just uh, obviously saying that if you use these things, just like you'd replace arms in a GU or a GQ, if you use these things off-road, load it up, I'd seriously consider getting the stronger lower control arms. You can actually, and we did look at it, you can actually probably beef the original ones up, but if you want to start and all the rest of it, you could plate them. There's a few places you could probably plate in here, plate around there, cross here, now cross here, and then laminate the outside of it. But um, really, by the time you do all that, don't know if they're going to be as strong. You've still got your alignment issues because they're then not long enough. Um, yeah, I was happy to pay the money, especially um, when you do, then can use it for the GVM upgrade as well. The G is no good to me at the moment because I'm in Queensland. And I was talking to Andrew the other day on track, and Queensland is the one state that He's still trying to get it through. I think every other state, they can get their 40, 80 kilos. We can't. So anyway, it'll come. But in the meantime, I want them just purely for the strength. Uh, there you go. And it saves me feeling like this one around the tracks next time. Well, once again, I've broken the 62, doing the most mild stuff. There's a bit of a rock just under here. And this just didn't pull over. It says it just bent the arm. So... I just crawled up that hill over there, which there'll be a video of here somewhere. No dramas at all. Turned around, I was coming back down the other way. Yeah, that's just hooked up and bent out. It decided to bend out rather than going around the corner. So that's the second rear, that's the second lower control arm that's bent. That arm is just bent to the shit house. So, not real happy, not real happy. And I was just mucking around, crawling with a bit of traction control, having a bit of fun on some little wombat holes. And now I've got an alignment issue like you've never seen. I've got to try and get it out, and all the roads look like that. Both directions. So we'll have to see what happens next. And it's five o'clock. Bargain. <laughs> Crab walking. So she drove out of the scrub okay, no real issues. Just a bit sideways, a bit of crabbing, and then uh, got a home, got, got a toad, toad, obviously. And see that bucket is just kinked right down there. That's meant to be flat right through that surface. So that bucket's just kinked down. So we look back at the video, and uh, when we watch the video, we can see that I sort of stuffed up a bit. There's a tree here. There's a tree sort of just down here, which is fine. And I was looking in the mirror and saw this part of the tree. What I didn't see was at the bottom of the tree, it kicked out, kicked out and went in here. Oi, shush, I'm talking. No, kicked out and went in here. And I've just picked up the edge of that knob. I felt it stop a bit and went, oh, that's weird. And I just applied a bit of throttle and it pulled round and uh, yeah, bent the arm. And at first I was thinking to myself, well, that's a bit crap these things are pretty weak but 
you got to remember, first thing we do to a GQ when we take it off road is exhibit A. First thing we do one of these when we take it off road. So we don't break anything is we do that. That's actually a heavy duty pipe as well, and then back it up, or you buy aftermarket ones. And the panard rod up in under there, because if you don't beat them up, first thing you do when you hit a tree just like that side, you know, from the side and put pressure on from the side, is it bends those arms or the arm across. The panard rod pushes the whole axle across. And then these kink, when these kink, you give a bit of a drive, they bend up, they bend up, and break the front off your diff. So it's no so different, whatever you buy, look what you're using it for, uh, modify it to suit. <laughs> Pretty easy to change, all I've done, they're obviously out already here in this picture, but anyway, you just undo the bolts, a couple of screws that hold them onto the rear control arm. Uh, I actually had the car on the hoist, then I've just, uh, jacked the arm up, put the put the jack right underneath where the spring is, jacked it up, put just a tie in here to hold it all in place. Um, the airbag's uneven flat. Um, and then, yeah, basically you unbolt uh, this bolt here, and then the inner bolt, and then that, that one comes out pretty easily. You just tap it out, and then you let the jack down gradually till there's no weight on it, and the weight goes onto this. And then, yeah, knock the other bolt out, remembering which way they go in, because they have the adjusters for the wheel alignment. And uh, when you put the new ones in, the exact reversal, you've got to obviously change the bush, which is a bit of a bugger of a job. You've got to peel the bushes out of these ones. You've got to press them out. Lucky I've got a mate with a good press and a heap of dies. So we press them out, press them into the new ones. These ones have only got 30,000 Ks on them. So, uh, in fact, <laughs> that one's a new arm. That wouldn't have 10,000 Ks on it. Doesn't look new, does it? Um, so yeah, I'll reuse the bushes. Either way, if I bought new bushes, I have to push them in. I was told that to buy new bushes, uh, that you can't. To buy a new bush from this, and you have to buy the whole arm. Anyway, um, there you go. 